Hello and welcome to the Voice of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through the wonderful array of guests we have on the show and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to the Voice of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I'm your host for the podcast. Now today we're talking all about emotions. Now I'm really looking forward to this one because We've not talked about emotional bandwidth on the show before, so I want to get a really good understanding of what it is, what it means, what it's all about. Like, how is that going to help us with clarity and resilience and and alignment? Like, what does it all mean? And that's what I want to find out. And I know that um, after experiencing an emotionally um, abusive relationship, I get the understanding of emotions and how emotions can rule our lives, can make us do things that we probably wouldn't normally do. And I think that's got to do with the bandwidth, but I'm not sure. That's why I've got lovely Dana on the show. Hi, Dana, how are you? I'm great, Susan. How are you? I'm really good. Now, with the video, it is going a little bit funny, but just keep on going. If you do get knocked off, um, jump back on the show because I will talk. You know, I'm good at doing that. (laughs) Um, but what I want to know is all about you. How did you get from where you were to where you are today? Um, through a lot of work, honestly. I, um, you know, I started off after college uh, in a, a great career. It was kind of a dream. At, you know, in my early 20s, I was working in investment banking in New York and London. And, um, and, it was a high level of success for me and my family. Like I, I didn't really know where to go or what to do from there. And when I looked around, um, while people were really successful and they were motivated and, um, and what have you, um, I started to see that people weren't necessarily really happy and joyful. And, uh, and, you know, my very young self told me, I was like, well, you better start looking for that. Like you better start figuring that out. Um, and so I left investment banking and I did, um, I followed my heart, uh, with who I was dating at the time and moved to Croatia and I did international development in Serbia and Croatia which was a passion of mine. I had really wanted to be in international development. Um, I studied transitional economies in college. And so I wanted to kind of have experience. And it was a fantastic, amazing experience, um, a, a life experience. But I really found that that's not what I wanted to do. And so um, I took another turn and got my MBA at Berkeley for social entrepreneurship and really pursuing um, food and wellness and how we really up level our lives and promote health through food. Uh, and Berkeley was really the place to do it as uh, still really is. Um, and I found, and I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. I really wanted to start a business and, um, and uh, grow things and work with people in that way. I found, uh, you know, after a little bit of time that working in California, um, and, um, was just not like the ideal that I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like this amazing experience that I would never want to leave and I'd want to stay there forever. And, um, it just wasn't, I'm from Houston. I miss the sunshine. I miss the, um, ease of life. I miss the connection of people. And so I moved back to Houston. Um, I did work for, for several, food entrepreneurs when I first came back and um, it was a horrible working experience. Uh, And I um, then went into the yoga space. So um, I had practiced yoga for a very long time since college. And um, I actually got my teacher training while I lived in Europe, all the stars aligned for this particular thing. And, uh, and I was able to get my training 
while I was there. And so I had been practicing and teaching yoga for probably um, six or seven years at this point. And so when I moved back and things weren't working out well, I mean, things were actually absolutely horrible. <laughs> um, I went to work for this big international yoga company and um, got even more experience and more training and a deeper understanding of how the wellness world works, which, you know, honestly is not always fantastic. And seeing the big backside of multiple um, big wellness organi organizations really showed me kind of where the pitfalls were of this guru um, mentality. Um, but it also gave me a great deal of experience and training. And it was during that time that I found breath work. And so for me, breath work really changed my life. It allowed me to have an embodied experience that yoga gave me for like a millisecond. Meditation gave me for like a little glimpse of what was possible. And, you know, remember at this point, I had been practicing yoga and meditation for 10 years or more. And so to have this new practice come in, this cathartic practice of breath work that allowed me to work with emotion and work with energy in a profound, expansive way, um, literally changed my life. From the moment I started breath work, my life opened up in a whole new way and has only continue to open and expand and um, show me different places to go. And so that led me to opening my own studio, working with people in groups and on a one on one situations. Um, and I, so I had my own studio for um, eight years and uh, and it was a really great growth period. Like I was really able to do lots of workshops and teach lots of people and um, really come more into my own intuition and deepen my own practice and my own understanding of how to work with energy and how to teach others how to work with emotion and energy. Um, and what I found at that time is that most of the people who were attracted to me were very successful business people. So they were entrepreneurs, they were um, high level professionals who really wanted more out of life and they really wanted to experience more. Um, and have have a life that was full of more joy and more fun and more ease and most of the time that they don't have that because they have emotional blocks that keep them from really experiencing that and emotional triggers that drive their world in a way that they really wish it, it didn't right and so Working with breath, working with energy and sound, I am able really to help people move into a place where they are responding to situations instead of reacting to situations. And so what that means is that they're, um, they can feel their emotions, they can experience their emotions, they can process their emotions, and then they can respond to the situation. And, and that means that you have presence and you have ease. And that means that you're able, you have the capacity to really take in and experience fully whatever life is presenting to you. And the truth is, most of us don't walk through life that way, right? Most of us walk through life avoiding situations that might trigger us or only doing this or only doing that or staying in a safe zone. Um, and so it's quite freeing to know that you're going to be able to handle whatever comes out um, of life, that whatever life gives you, you can really have the presence and the capacity and the tools to process and respond in your highest and best good and in your highest and best good for everybody that you know enough about your own self and your own power and your own gifts and you value them and you love them to such an extent that you then respond and create in the world versus get tossed around and kind of manage getting through each day. Um, and so that really led me to focusing on my coaching practice, which is what I do now. Focusing on what? What was it called? My coaching practice. Well, so coaching. now, now I don't have a studio and really I just coach people on this process. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 
with the understanding of that, um, and you've explained a lot of that, so I don't need to ask the questions there. But what I want to get an understanding of, so I know how we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this with breath work and, and sound healing and different areas like that, which we'll go into a little bit more. But what is um, emotional bandwidth? What What is this? I, I, I have heard it bantered around, but I, being a bit of a, a uni nerd, want to know exactly what it is. <laughs> So the way I talk and work with emotional bandwidth is really your capacity to experience and feel emotion. And, and that's actually energy in motion. And so many of us are trained that emotions are bad. You know, like you're not successful if you have a lot of emotion. Um, in the Western world, that's just not really... Uh, accepted or taken in. So most of the time we suppress or repress our emotions and we kind of keep them really closed in. And um, what that means is that oftentimes we get into this place of not actually even being able to feel our emotions. And that means that there's a whole lot of light that we can't feel or experience. And so um, like an easy example of this is anger, right? So Many people, right, as soon as they start to feel a tinge of anger, they just shut it right down and, and suppress and repress it. And so their emotional bandwidth or their emotional capacity to handle anger is very limited or small. And so, you know, when we have a lot of life happening and we have a lot of experience and energy to process, which... Currently, you know, the truth is almost every human just there's just a lot of life happening for everyone, all different kinds of life. Right. But it's just a lot all the time. And, you know, as humans, we have to have downtime. We have to relax. We have to integrate. We have to allow all that energy and emotion to process through our system. And when we don't have that, right, when we're just in this go, 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 go pattern, then our, our emotional capacity becomes limited. Our emotional bandwidth, like the amount of emotion and energy and experience we can actually handle and process just gets very small. Um, is that helpful? Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So um, as, as an example, like... Um, if I'm feeling quite stressed and everything else and somebody has a, has a, a go at me, you know, um, somebody is, 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 I don't know, you just get a, a sort of a response, a, a negative response. I might be, I might be at the checkout and somebody pushes through. If I'm not feeling stressed and, and, and all caught up in my own crap, I can handle that. It doesn't usually worry me, but other times I'll go snap. And, and I feel that that is a bit like the road rage that we experience too now. You know, people are, are driving along, they're in their own emotional crap. <laughs> and if you get cut off, it can instantly create a road rage if your bandwidth, emotional bandwidth, is very, very narrow. If somebody cuts you off yes. and your emotional bandwidth, your, how you're feeling and everything else is wider, it you might call them names, but... <laughs> You're not going to be emotionally <laughs> to it. Is, is that what you mean? Exactly. And that's usually my indicator. So um, when I work with people, I tell them if your reaction is out of line with what the incident is, right? Like if, if somebody does something very small, like the, the pushing the way through the line or what have you, that's it, or bumps into you, right? And your reaction is just like, you kind of lose it on them, then that's an indication that your bandwidth is, your emotional bandwidth is limited and you, you need to go take some time for yourself and process so that you can open up and expand that emotional bandwidth 100%. Okay. And another, another thing as you were talking, I was sort of thinking, is it like, Okay, so there's times there when somebody has um, said something or responded in a particular way. I'm thinking about work at this stage. Um, and somebody has said something and it's triggered something from the past, obviously. And I will respond, but I will get over it a bit quicker. 
So the initial initial response isn't isn't attacking, but it is no no hang on you no I will not tolerate that. That's and sometimes when I say no I won't tolerate that I can be a little bit more assertive than normal because it has triggered. But I'm also aware now I can let it go. I don't hold on to it like I used to. Is that to do with the emotional bandwidth as well? Yes, it, it, 100%. So, and, and that's also a skill set, right? You've wor worked through something there. You've taken a trigger and you've worked on that trigger. And so if it's still triggering for you, that may be an indication that there is more work to do there. Like maybe you've done steps one through five, but maybe there's five through 10 that you still need to let yourself really feel everything that's there and get all the lessons and information that are there for you. Um, and so that's just a process, but 100%, the more, uh, well, so the other thing that's interesting about those kinds of situations too, is when your emotional bandwidth in general is wider, right? You're more present, you're more relaxed. You've been really taking care of yourself. Um, uh, your ability to handle those kinds of triggers is, is easier and better, but if your emotional bandwidth is limited and you haven't been doing your self-care and you are stressed and there are a lot of things that go on, sometimes those old triggers really, you are not as able to handle them. So, you know, it, it kind of depends on the trigger, but having that baseline of emotional bandwidth um, at a wide place ensures that you're able to handle all those things um, in a much more reasonable joyful way um than not Does oh, that, okay. that cool? yes yes absolutely because it, i know there's there's obviously different ways and there's there's times there when you will handle things and there's times when no you won't and there's times when I, like i said I, I know there's particular triggers that will come up i'm quite aware of them um and and i'm quite aware that they make me go oh no not going to do that because i used to do that and i don't like that and, and it's almost like that pendulum swing, you know, where you you accepted it so long and then all, like when you give up smoking and you can't stand being around smokers. It's that extreme <laughs> to one side, you know, and it's just getting that balance again right in the middle. So, I yeah, I, I really get that. And so the other aspect too, when you're saying uh, the emotional bandwidth, so when you are um, picking up, other emotions and other people's emotions is that to do with the bandwidth because I am very very actually I, I had to sort of close it down a bit because I could walk into my office when I was working in an office I could walk in there and I could tell you exactly what emotions were happening on every single person and I had to sort of bring that back in a little bit because it was becoming I felt I was starting to take on their emotions or starting to respond to their emotions and it was like no no I can feel them I don't need to respond to them is that part of it as well um well so I would say that the wider your emotional bandwidth is the easier you can distinguish between what is yours and what isn't yours so when our emotional bandwidth is limited um our awareness is is, is lessened if you will it's also limited and yeah. so we are not as able to distinguish like what's that, what's my energy, what's my emotion and what's somebody else's emotion, like wh who has emotionally just thrown up on me. Um, if we're not, if we don't have emotional bandwidth and capacity to process emotion and energy, um, then it's hard for us to distinguish between the two. And so our skill set and being able to work in those situations becomes more limited and usually really frustrating and, and detrimental, honestly, especially if you're empathic. Um, and so uh, as you learn to increase your emotional bandwidth, as you learn to take better care of yourself and really honor your own energy, then you become to understand what is your energy. And when you become to, when you understand what's your energy, then it gets way easier to be like, oh, that's your emotion and that's your energy and that isn't mine. Um, and then you can take that skill level to the next step, which is like, 
why can I pick up on that emotion? And is there information in there for me? Okay, no, I can let that go. Oh, I need that information today for this particular reason. So my system needs that information and I'm going to use that in this particular way. So that's kind of the next level of refinement of working with your energy and emotions to where it becomes an intuitive skill set. Um, and so instead of like swimming in the sea of emotions, which can feel um, very frustrating and draining, you have a skill set of, of being able to hold your own energy and know your own energy and emotions and do what you need to take care of your energy and emotions so that then when you walk in the world and you feel and sense and get other information, you can start to understand what that information is. Is it somebody else's emotions? Is it some other kind of information? Is there a perception that's coming in that's this particular kind of thing? And the more emotional bandwidth you have, the more capacity you have, the easier and easier it becomes to develop that skill set. Yes. I, and I want to just give in one, give out one more um explanation and because this happened to me recently so we were doing a work meeting and we were on zoom or you know over the google meets or whatever it was um and the ceo was obviously in a rush or in a hurry or did not want to be there i don't I'm, i didn't go into it when i'm in my work mode i'm not in my i mean i'm still intuitive but i'm not as open i do tend to close down in my work area when i'm going through that because I don't want to take on that crap. Uh, but she was going a uh, 100 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. And it was almost like, oh, my God, do not want to be in this meeting. Like, whoa. But it made everybody else talk fast. It made everybody else get through their the reports as quick as they can. It made everybody else... Um, because she started the meeting, because of her energy, because of her attitude, it made everybody else fall in line with it. And and it's really, I wanted to bring this up because it was really relevant. I remember sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, this woman has just made us smash through this. Nobody's been able to talk. No one's been able to express how they're feeling or express their um, uh, situations in their workload or anything else she's basically shut everybody down by talking so quickly and not allowing anyone to interact or anything like that and and I was you know just sitting there in amazement watching how every one of us then and and me too I did it too because I thought well that's what everyone's doing I'll get off here as quick as I can too because <laughs> I don't want to be here <laughs> you don't want to be there I don't want to be there but, but it, I'm just why I'm saying it. It's it's like this is how we get caught up in other people's emotions, or how we get caught up in the energy that they're putting out. And I wasn't necessarily caught up in her emotion, but I was certainly all of us. And this is done. Remind, remind you, it's done through Zoom. We weren't even in the same room, yeah. and so it all of us were scattered around Brisbane, Gold Coast, you know, the areas. Uh, and we all did the same thing. And I thought to myself, that was such a classic um, example of energy emotion, Ex a classic example of how people take on other people's emotions. And I, I didn't necessarily take on her emotion, but I certainly responded because, I mean, mate, if you don't want to be there, I don't want to be there. Easy peasy. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I wanted to just bring that forward because um, I just thought that was really interesting. So I would actually call that entrainment and it happens all the time. We are energetic beings and the law of entrainment is, is a law of physics. Um, and it essentially says like energies will um, vibrate or entrain to the same energy. And so there's a really, you can see um videos of it on youtube like if there is if there are a whole bunch of um metronomes going at different rates if you put them all together they will entrain to the same beat I as agree. humans we operate off frequency and vibration and so mm -hmm. we entrain to the vibrations that are around us and the dominant vibrations that are around us and so 
you know, the positive view of this that I like to take is when you walk onto a playground or into a, a children's um, classroom, like a kindergarten, you know, and they're having fun and they're enjoying themselves and they're playing, you know, you can't help but smile because the, the vibration of the room is happiness and delight and joy. And so you entrain into that frequency. In work meetings and in, in work environments, it does happen. Like if there is a dominant energy and, and a boss can bring or a leader can bring that energy to the table, everybody entrains to that energy. And, you know, in the environment we're in now, fear, anxiety, um, uncertainty, um, not feeling confident, insecurity, all of these can really come up in those situations and kind of dominate and infiltrate the, um, the environment. And so it's one of the things that, uh, that it's really why you need to be careful, like where you work and who you work with and in your life, who you're around and the places and environments that you put yourself in, because you're a vibrational being by nature, you will entrain to the frequencies and environments that are around you. It's one of the reasons why getting out into nature is so important, especially if you live in a city, that just being in nature, you come back to your natural frequency and vibration. Nature um, has its own frequency and um, we all live in nature. It, you know, just sometimes when we're in cities, you, the overwhelming frequency of nature is not prevalent because we have cars and concrete and electronics and all those kinds of things. But when you're in the forest or at the ocean or near a river, your system relaxes naturally because you entrain to this natural, easeful frequency, um, which is what we're designed to operate in. So, you know, being aware of the frequencies and vibrations that you're in and around, particularly in relationship to other humans and environments, uh, has a huge impact on your your well-being, um, your physical, mental uh, well-being, as well as your vibrational and emotional well-being. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm lucky because uh, one of the staff members I work with, she and I sort of usually do a debrief after it. Um, so it's really cool because we then go, and she's very intuitive as well, and then we sort of go, whoa, what was that like tornado like? What was going on there? Um, but but the, the, the other aspect I wanted to look at too is I could have pushed back. I could see what was going on and I could have pushed back. But I think it's all about picking the fights as well. Like you don't need to, to do that if that's not what it's about. So, um, yeah, I wanted to bring that forward. I thought that was a really good example on how quickly we can be, like you say, in, re entrained? Entrained? Entrained. Entrained, yeah. Entrainment, how, yes. Entrainment, yeah. How quickly it can all happen. Um, and, again, I was aware of it, so I knew that it wasn't something I was going to hold on to um and take with me so that was that was also part of it and i think this is what what you're saying if you can get out into nature after that and get back into your space because the biggest issue i found with with that sort of thing if i took that to my next interview if you know took that to my next to my children if i took that attitude and kept it going that um energy and kept it going that is when I feel I would be failing as a person, as as a, a, a spiritual being. Um, I feel I would not be holding true then because I'm actually then responding to someone else with somebody else's emotion or somebody else's energy. You got it. 100%. Okay. Cool. All yeah. right. So we know the crappy part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Very understanding of the crappy part of it. But before I go on to the next bit how to start to get through it. Um, on the little ticker tape, for those who can't see the little ticker tape who is listening on the podcast, you can connect with Dana on www.danasharmas.com. So it's D-A-N-A, -A, Dana, and Sharmas, S-H-A-M-A-S.com. Okay, so you can connect with her there. Now, what I want to ask next is, right, 
I'm quite aware of this crappy stuff that's happening around me. I do get the occasional road rage. No, I'm not, I'm not that bad. Um, but okay, what, what are our next steps? So we, we're experiencing that. Um, what do we do next? How can we stop that going? And I know that you do all the training and everything else and you've got to do it properly, but have you got some ideas that we can go through to stop us responding, to stop us taking that horrible energy that we've just experienced and taking that to somebody else? The biggest thing is to pause and to slow down, right? And so even if you just take, you know, now in this world of Zoom, if you were on one Zoom meeting and then you pop on to another Zoom meeting and you took all that zippy energy with you, right? It, you can resolve that really by taking a short break in between the two, breathing, connecting back and feeling in to your own body and your own energy. And, you know, at first it may take a little bit to do that because you're in your head, right? Um, but eventually it gets easier for you to feel your body and listen to your body and connect back in. And that can happen with just a few simple breaths and really guiding and directing your, your mind and your awareness back to your body and to your feet. And just starting with those simple practices on a regular and more frequent basis, it leads to really amazing results and really helps you expand your awareness and connect back in to your own beingness. So it's almost like you, if you were going, you you sort of said it from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting, which is which is understandable. But it's almost like from going from almost one person to another person, um, not necessarily in the same room, obviously. But if I was talking to you here and I've picked up your energy here, and it's all good energy, so I don't mind sharing that one. Um, but if, if I then if I you know had a Zoom meeting and it was all crappy, and I took that to I went outside and started talking to my partner. If I have a break in between that and just, I call it om, just to sit, just om a bit, you know, bring yourself back, do your breath work, um, and then then go to the next section or next person or the next, I don't know, Mom. car. Yeah. yeah. And what's really fascinating is you said OM, right? So your you which is a sound. And so OM is a universal sound. And sound is actually one of the most powerful ways to clear energy. Because when we suppress and repress, most of the time we have to be still and we have to be quiet, right? So if you just stand up, shake your body make a little bit of sound and then take three to 10 breaths, my guess is that your energy will be significantly reset. Does that make sense? That is gold. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> I've watched my daughter. And you, my can daughter also, is you can really do any sound, any, any sound. Vowel sounds are great. You can sing, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I just do, I just say, oh my, that's just what I do. But I've watched my daughter with her children and she'll say, no, you're being silly, count to 10. Or, you know, like, because they're, they're acting on emotions and she'll say, no, stop, sit down, count to 10. <laughs> she basically makes them count to 10. And okay, she, they're not breathing, doing 10 breaths or anything, but while they're counting to 10, they're taking their mind off stuff. They're still breathing. Um, they're not got the focus on the breath. But, you know, for young children, I think to myself, whoa, that's a really good little trick, you know, because that's for children. Look at it as ad adults. If you're ready to start screaming and yelling, just stop, um, make a sound, shake your body, do a little bit of um, do a little bit of, yeah, toning or whatever it is. And just I mean, toning is a great way to do it instead of screaming, right? Like we need to get sound out. Like if you feel like screaming, I tell my clients all the time, I'm like, go get a pillow and just scream. Like it's okay. You have emotion to get out. You have sound that wants to come out of your system. It's better to just get it out and you don't have to get it out at somebody, right? Like that's where 
that's where it becomes not good. Then you that that's directing energy at somebody that really doesn't deserve it. Whereas if you're just working on your own emotional processing, which all emotional processing is your own job, um, then you know you can scream into a pillow, you can scream in your car. The, I, the, the whole idea is that you're getting the emotion and the sound out. And getting sound out is incredibly healing, especially like we need people that can voice their, uh, their truth, their emotion, their opinion, and their viewpoint. And if you shut down that sound all the time, you get out of practice, right? So just starting by making sound allows you to refine your ability to actually voice your energy and your own truth. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you you hear it all the time, like people say, screaming to a pillow. I, I'm, I'm not a screamer, but... I like that om sound. I love the vibration um, and not just the om, but the vibration that it gives you and everything else. But you think about it, your emotions are just energy in motion. So if you can release that energy and people sometimes do it by doing sport or, you know, doing that physical um, side of it, but doing it through voice, doing it by, by, by just sitting there and, and allowing that energy to be released, without holding on to it, it's, it's magic. You, you've got to do it. Yes. Yes. And if you think about Native traditions, you know, every tradition has singing traditions, every yes. single tradition, um, every mm-hmm. single culture, because it's part of how we stay healthy is actually to make sound. <laughs> like it keeps our whole system in harmony. And so we're designed, like that is part of our design is to make sound so it's really really important yeah and i love the singing because that that yeah that's the same I, I know when i'm feeling down i'll put on a sad sooky song and i'll sing it and i'll sing it over and over and over and over again and then all of a sudden it's like i don't need to sing it now it's gone hey i wonder i wonder you know when you get a song stuck in your head you don't know where you've heard it. You've just got a song stuck in your head and it plays over and over and over in your head. I wonder if that's trying to tell you to release something. I wonder if it is. I wonder if you have like a, a memory attached to that song that has emotion attached to it. That's and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I often ready to go forward. Yeah. yeah. I think the song stuck in my head and, and I'll be singing it and, and it might only be just a couple of words like you know when you know a song and you know like maybe just the chorus and you don't know any of the, the um any of the, the verses or you just know one bit in the verse and then you you can hum the rest of it but you sort of don't know what the words are i'm gonna have a look at that next time it gets stuck in my head i'm gonna go in a bit deeper do a meditation on it go a bit deeper and find out what that's all about i reckon that's i really agree cool. with you i yeah. love that yes oh gosh yes goodness. but before we go any further you have what you call an alignment circle now you did say to me before we started that you do it every i nearly said every year every month i should say and your next one's coming up on july the second you you can get it on your website danashamas.com can you tell us a little bit about what this is what what is an alignment circle sure so the alignment circle is um is other so it's it is a circle like we well a virtual circle (laughs) um but in in earth traditions we do call in all the elements or i will call in all the elements to set the stage of the circle but um i walk you through a meditation that helps bring your body mind and spirit back into alignment so that you can connect more fully with your energy your truth and your intuition and um and really honor that and so that's a practice um i am choosing to work with the full moon in this just because that's a a nice time of energy to do that it also um is a time where the light of the moon often shines um so brightly that we see the things that are out of alignment more clearly and so the alignment circle is also an opportunity to let those things go Um, And it's really designed to be like this entry point into how you do this kind of work. And 
and uh, and honoring the flat fact that it is a practice right like we have to do it all the yeah. time like if you this world is very busy it's very chaotic and we're in this period of intense change and so coming back into alignment is a very constant practice and um, you know inga when we do balancing poses the object of tree pose, right, when we stand on one leg, is really not to be like concrete. The object is really to know how you come back to center, that you have a bazillion undulations from one side to the next, but maintaining that focus and concentration to bring yourself back to center, no matter how far you undulate off. And so this is that kind of practice of like, okay, so, you know, things are connected. So let's just take this hour or 90 minutes and bring ourselves back into connection and have support and community to do that. Oh, that's lovely. So they can get that on your website, go onto your website and have a look at that. And um, and they, you just connect up through Zoom or something, do you? Oops, I've lost you a little bit. No, yeah. She's gone. She's gone. Yeah. Yes. After all my one on ones, my programming and no I'm okay um here. we went a, little bit, here. went a little bit funny then sorry Dana we went a little bit funny then so would you jump on the website and there'll be the um the alignment circle on there that you can get to and you can do in, any of the one-on-one -on -one coaching and and group training too so have a look at the website so any we would we, we're just about out of time so that's why I'm, I'm rushing along um any yeah. final thank you for being on the show by the way any final uh tidbits you've got for us I, I would say just find the joy in your life and really amplify it um it, it is there's so many things that can distract us and the truth is we need you in your fullest and your best and your most radiant light and truth and so I just encourage you to take the time and find the resources to really connect and love your own energy, your own light, and your own gifts, and really share that with the world. Um, we are in a place where things are changing, and we have the opportunity to really create a world um, that is amazing and joyful and brilliant for all humans. <laughs> <laughs> all humans <Yeah. laughs> and so we need all of you to be all of who you are to do that beautiful thank you so much for being on the show Dana that is just brilliant love it um wait there don't go away though um so guys jump onto the website Dana shamus.com uh, and have a look and join up in the alignment circle It'll be really interesting and it's going to give you a monthly practice which is which is perfect for what we need if you want that clarity if you want the resilience if you want to be in alignment you've got to start doing it you've got to actually put things into places action it and that's the main thing you've asked if you need help you've you've listened to it you've heard it here on the show now you've got to action it so start putting some stuff into action but I am Susan Jane. Thank you for listening to the podcast or watching it on the video on the show. Uh, this is the Voice of Intuition. If you'd like to share, subscribe, um, and what did I say? Share, subscribe, like. That's the other one. Uh, the podcast, I would be absolutely honoured. And I really look forward to seeing you all next week. So that's it from me. I'll say bye for now. Bye.